I'm standing here along with two multimeters. I have a digital multimeter, it's a Klein MM1000, and I have an analog Radio Shack multimeter. And today we're going to do kind of a broad overview of each of these with our, most of our focus will be on the digital multimeter. And we just want to kind of do a, a general overview of, of digital multimeter. What are they and what do they do? Okay, we've tightened up our, our image here and we just zoomed in on the meters and we've got me out of there. And the first thing I want to do is talk about a, the similarities between these two meters. Well, we should say this first or ask ourselves, what is a multimeter and, and what does it do? And a multimeter by definition is a test instrument that will conduct two or more electrical test measurements. And most digital multimeters and, and analog multimeters will do current measurements, it will do voltage, voltage measurements, and resistance measurements. Some of them will do a lot more. As you can see, we have a lot of other functions here, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But a multimeter is a test instrument that will do two or more electrical quantities for you. And let's look at some similarities first. You'll notice first, uh, each has a selector switch where we can select different functions. Each has ports on the bottom where you will you know, plug in your banana leads and you can use those to extend to test on your circuits, whatever you're testing for. And then you'll also see they each have a face where you will see what your, where your measurement is at. If I turn this one on the digital multimeter, you'll see it actually gives us a numeric value that we interpret. But when we look at this analog meter, we have a needle deflecting across a scale on the face of the meter, and we have to interpret by watching what the, what the needle does across the face of there. So in a moment here, I'll zoom in a little bit more on this. We'll talk about the analog meter. Okay, I have leaned my analog meter up against one of my favorite rocks from my rock collection, so we can take a look at this a little bit more in depth. And as you can see, we've got our selector switch. We're in the off position, but as you work your way around here, you can see you have all kinds of selections. And uh, on this side, I have DC voltage over here. Over here, I have ohms for resistance. Down here, I have three battery check modes. Down here, I have DC milliamps, a milliamp being one thousandth of an amp, one milliamp is. And then finally down here, these red uh, selections are AC voltage. So you can see it has all these capabilities. And as you're looking at this, you can see on the DC voltage, I have 10, 25, 50, 250, and 500. Those are the range selections for when you're uh, selecting to go on DC voltage measurement mode. And the range is the highest and lowest that uh, the, numer the, the value you can record, uh, or excuse, you can capture on a given mode. So if you have it set for 10 volts DC, 10 volts would be the maximum it would be able to pick up on that measurement. So it matters greatly when you do that. If you take a look at ohms, you can see I have uh, an X time, or excuse me, X1K, X100, X10, and then I also have a continuity with tone on here. And so looking at that, you can see I have all these different selections here, but I only have one needle movement. So as the needle deflects across the face, you have to pick from whichever one of these numbers is associated with whatever whatever setting you have put on there. So it makes it a little difficult sometimes to interpret what you're doing because you have to interpret both the needle movement and whichever of the numbers on display you're supposed to be reading from to give you what your measurement is. So uh, now that we've kind of looked generally at that, I don't want to go too much more in depth. We'll do that later in other videos. I want to now take a look at a digital multimeter and let's make a comparison. Okay, we have zoomed in onto the digital multimeter now, and we'll spend a little bit more time on this one and go a little bit more in depth. And the first thing we want to do is, just for fun, we'll put the test leads into the appropriate ports, and we'll assume we're going to do a voltage test. So the common would go here, where it says COM, and then the red lead would go up here, where it has volt, ohm, hertz cycle, and, and temp, and it also has a couple other things on there. And so that's how we would put the test leads in, and then the probes would be used to access whatever circuit part or, or, or circuit conductor that we were trying to take a measurement of. And next thing we'll do is take a look at our selector. And it's just like on the analog meter, you can move it around each different selection. And so I will do this. I'll go up to voltage right now. And when, when I do, you can see we have a bunch of zeros. It's actually fluctuating a little on the end. 
and it's got a little squiggly line here, and that means it defaults to testing for AC voltage. If I wanted to test for DC, instead of going to another selection like I did on the other meter, I hit the select button, and you can see now it's changed that to read for DC voltage. So it has both AC and DC capabilities, but it's at the same selection on this particular meter. And while we're still looking at voltage, we need to understand something else about this particular meter. It's an auto ranging meter, meaning it has several ranges on board. And uh, when you first turn it on and it, it, it goes by default into auto range, it means it will read through all of the different uh, ranges in the profile and get an appropriate measurement. And so this particular meter has on board, it's got a, a 400 millivolt uh, range. It's got a four volt range a 40 volt range, a 400 volt range, and then a 1000 volt range. And what that means, because it's auto ranging, you could pick up anything between 400 millivolts and well, actually millivolt, you could pick up anything in the millivolt range all the way to 1000 volts in auto range. That being said, you can override and go with a, a range of your own choice by just pressing the range button. So when I press the range button here, it now changes the range and you can see, you should be able to see that it's saying millivolt range right now. So I have manually selected a different range. And if I press the range button again, I get a voltage. Now I'm in the four volt range. And if I keep pressing it, I will get more and more ranges that whatever's available on there. And when I go up to the next setting, we go to ohms and this multimeter is the same. It's auto ranging in there and it has several ranges available in resistance, it has a 400 ohm range. It has a four kilo ohm being a thousand, so that's 4,000 ohms. It has a 40,000 ohm range, a 400,000 range, and then a four, or excuse me, a four milliamp, or excuse me, a four mega amp, mega ohm range, and then also 40 mega ohm range. You'll also notice where we're, when we're set up for resistance on the ohm symbol here, it has in orange, it's got uh, a, a little symbol for a diode, and it also has a continuity check. It's really hard to see that, I think. So to get that, you press the orange select button because that's in orange also. So when I do that, I'm now set up for continuity test with tone. So if I touch the leads together, you'll hear a tone. You can see I'm getting a resistance measurement. So I don't know if you can hear that tone, but you, you'll do that. If I press that again, I end up in diode check mode. And I won't go too in depth on that because this, that's really for a later time. But you can see the difference between this and the analog meter. A lot of the functions here you have to select by, by uh, turning on the meter, going to a certain setting, and then going with the buttons and doing further functions to get where you need to go. If I go up to the next setting, I go to uh, Hertz cycles and I can do duty cycle measurements and then here I go with Capacitors so I can measure farads on there and this one is a, is a, a, a Nice meter because it also has temperature if I go here I have probes that I have to put in here and I can do temperature measurements and let's hang on there And I'll see if I get a probe and show you what I mean Okay, while we were away I inserted the temperature probe into the it's a common and the volt ohm port on here and it's really a thermal couple on the end of this. And when I touch it, you can see the temperature will start to climb on there. And you can do either Celsius or Fahrenheit. It's the same kind of thing because you can see it's got orange. So if I press orange for the C, now it will record it in Celsius rather than in Farad, or excuse me, in Fahrenheit. So you can see that's just one more capability that this meter has, making it a valuable tool for troubleshooting. Okay, the very last thing we want to do is talk about taking current measurements or amperage measurements with this meter. And it has three different settings for that. It's got a micro amp, it's got a milliamp, and it's got an amp setting. So it's micro, milli, and an amperage setting. And most of these meters, including this one, the 10 amp is a maximum for the current measurement on that because it is an inline test. And the thing to understand is you have to reconfigure. The common will go here, again, like it did before. But now you have two options for your, your current probe. One is here, which will be for your micro and your milliamp selection. So if you were doing micro or milliamps, so if I was gonna do microamps, I would go in this port. 
for my measurement. And then if I was going to do a uh, milliamp, that would go here again. But then if I have to do, if I want to do an amperage measurement of greater than that, like say I want to do five amperes, then I have to move my test lead to here for that. And the thing to understand about taking current measurements, you are actually taking all the current into the meter to be measured. And so it does limit how much you are able to measure with that. Okay, I'm gonna go off screen here after a moment. I guess I should talk about a couple more things. This does have a hold feature here. So if you're taking a measurement of say voltage and you wanted to hold the measurement so you could take a look at it later, you press the hold button and it will store it and keep it on the screen. And then when you press the button again, it goes away and it will start recording again. This also has a min max recording mode, meaning you could take this, this meter and hook it onto a circuit with alligator clips and leave it for an extended length of time and it will give you the minimum and the maximum uh, measurements that it records over time. It also has a relative or a delta mode, which uh, kind of, it's a little bit more complicated. I don't want to talk about that on this particular video. And then finally, I think I mentioned it does hertz, hertz, hertz cycles and duty cycles too. And I think that pretty well covers that. Now we're going to bring the meters back together and kind of close out. In closing, I brought both multimeters in front of me again, the analog and the digital multimeter. And in my way of thinking, it's pretty hard to beat a digital multimeter. I like the fact you get a numeric display on the screen. It's usually uh, pretty easy to interpret. When you start looking at uh, a, an analog meter like this, you have to watch the needle and make your selection on what you're trying to interpret by looking at all the different numbers. And so I, I just find it a little bit more cumbersome. This is also a manual meter, so you have to select your range. And uh, if you're starting, if you don't know your exact uh, value of voltage or whatever you're measuring, you kind of have to start at the top and then work your way down. Whereas with this, this particular instrument, when you are in auto range, it, select, it for, selects it for you and gives you the best possible measurement. So as far as I'm concerned, this is my, my meter of choice. Thanks for watching. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and check out the links we have below. Come back for new videos. We should be adding content each week. And finally, visit the Taking Measure website.